I, I think it's really that maybe 85 percent of it haven't thought about it at all. I think it's that's a probably sort of the problem. Off the, yeah. uh, cuff response. Yeah. I don't think it means much. It's not that they... And what people believe or the, or, or the way it's expressed. That the worlds are so different that they're making a remark without any knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's not as yeah. if they have seen Darwin's evidence and rejected it. It's just a different world. Yeah. That's so true. I it's think just an expression of... Uh, you know, like an overwhelming desire to believe the religion that does not include this idea. Let me, let me lay into the scientific and, and biblical conflict here. Both of you as scientists believe deeply and in the law of science and the fact of science that there's no way you can reconcile a divine creator and the implications of Darwin's theory of evolution. Yes? And Darwin understood that too because of what he said at the time that he wrote. I think, uh, you know, uh, anyone who, you know, a divine thing which interferes with DNA-based evolution, no, I don't believe it at all. Mm. It's, yeah. And Darwin understood it too, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I, he had actually once thought about the, but a I, religious life. But, uh, mm -hmm. well, everyone, that was your way of living. Well, he I mean, thought about being in, in the priesthood almost. Or well, well he, was was sort of, of, uh, he was sort of maneuvered into it right. because there wasn't anything left no, to he, do right? no, after he, he left he, medicine. Yeah, he didn't want to be a doctor and what else That's was. Right. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. uh, he gave you a good living, as they yeah. say. And, uh, uh, so, but he converted, I think it was during the voyage of the Beagle. Yeah, well, this was uh, what, 1831? Uh, 1831. 31 yeah. Tell he, me about that voyage and what it did because yeah. there is where he had the observation that gave rise to his theory. Yeah, well, he, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. The Voyage of the Beagle uh, was an epic voyage. It was around the world. And uh, it was conducted at a time when biologists were just beginning to explore biological diversity and also studying the fundamentals of geology. And young Darwin was thrown into this opportunity. Uh, and he had all that leisure time to, to study and observe uh, he changed from a ardent uh, Christian believer during that voyage uh, to uh, most of the way out, not because he was discovering evolution. He really didn't figure that out until after the voyage. Yeah. He was doing it because, as he said, uh, if the Bible is correct, and it says right there that those who do not, uh, not uh, believe in, uh, uh, is, you know, in, 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 in uh, salvation by Jesus, uh, uh, or, or obedience uh, in the Old Testament sense will go to hell. And he said, if that's true, uh, my brother and most of my friends are doomed forever. And he said, and that is a damnable doctrine. Well, that's, so we have certainly rejected it. But anyway, I'm an, I've, I must answer your question quickly. He accumulated an immense amount of information up here. Yeah, as and, well as and, ship stuff back to... And when he came yeah. back, he had his notebooks full, but he also had all these impressions, and all of them fit evolution. So, now, what kind of impressions did he have? What had he seen that was so compelling for him? He saw a number of things which are, um, you know, well exhibited in the Darwin uh, exhibition. Which we'll talk about. Yeah, we can talk about that. We can talk about that later. But what he saw were things like uh, when when you find a certain kind of a species, like a a rhea, a common rhea, the big ostrich-like bird, in one place, and you go down the coast, it's typical to find another species ex very close to that. As though, you know, uh, one, they evolve from some common stuff. He observed fossils uh, from a bygone era, which were all extinct, but they still, they resemble the modern forms that live there, as though there'd been yeah. some evolution or change in that direction. And then... Uh, he had pointed out to him after he got back to England, but he then he realized that this was true, was that the same species in places like the Galapagos differ, uh, into, or are differentiated into races. And all those things came together. And now he only needed one more piece, and that was how it happens. He believed, came to believe in evolution, but now how did it happen? He'd got that pretty well figured out by the 1840s. Okay, but then even then he didn't write until 1859 didn't publish until 1859. Why did he... What was 58 when he wrote his first essay yeah. with Wallace. Uh, but if he had it figured out, 
by 1840s, why didn't he write until 1859? Well, <laughs> was, I guess conventional uh, saying yeah. is that he didn't want to upset his wife. That's he right. knew, basically. <laughs> he didn't yes. want to upset his wife. <laughs> why, yes. why, why would she be upset? <laughs> because she wanted God. Because she know, was a religious person. Yes, she was yeah. a religious person. And Darwin knew that this was a very explosive idea. It would humiliate, it would embarrass his family, and it would also mean that he might lose his position in that country uh, uh, aristocracy he belonged to. So that's one, that, I think historians agree that this is the reason why uh, he worked and worked. And he piled up more and more of these, uh, uh, more and more evidence, and he was aiming toward a huge book. Right. And it, but it, some people will argue that it got, no, two things I want to say, whether this is in your book, you believe this is fact or fiction, these are both anthologies. Do you believe that he accelerated his process because he believed there was somebody else was going to write a book that would, that would steal some of the funds? Oh, yeah, I think no, oh, sure. without a doubt. No. <laughs> Wallace uh, yeah. sort of scared him. You know, he had this idea, and suddenly uh, someone else had it and was going to publish before him unless he did something. Right. So he had to work fast. How have people come to reconcile religion and evolution? Well, I think it's you've got to define. Uh, religion. If it's a, a personal God who interferes with our lives and listens to our prayers and can uh, aware of our existence, uh, 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 I really I can only mention one person that I know who believes that, who's a serious scientist. Once you see even only one serious scientist you know believes there is a personal God who listens to our prayers. Yeah, that's about it. I, I mean, don't know, you know one. Well, uh, you know, this is, I, you know, I, Francis, I know who you're talking Francis about. Well, I guess Collins. I know him. Yeah, okay. yeah Francis Collins. Collins yeah. Yeah, okay. he, he's often, <laughs> Francis right. Collins is often quoted. And, yeah, yeah, but I really don't know anyone else. And I, I think when you, now that we've carried it for so we actually look at DNA and see what it's like in the chimpanzee, and you see all these things, and the thought of anyone interfering, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, it seems wacko. What did Darwin say about these ideas of intelligent design? Because he anticipated arguments, did he? Not that I know of. No, no I don't think so. No, he wasn't thinking I, you, know, uh, uh, you know, he anticipated the, main, the controversy. No, it now uh, sort of only has come up, you know, after we have DNA and can see what's happening and uh, people say, well, you know, uh, Evolution couldn't have uh, come up with the bacterial flagella. Well, to me, that's actually a rather easy thing to come up and with. And the, uh, the eye is another <laughs> yes. one offered that I think it was we'd already solved that before uh, it was even yeah. put in yeah. on the, on the so table. So it's more or less yeah. saying you can't explain it. And, uh, you know, until DNA came along and we saw that, people yeah. would say, well, you can never explain heredity right. on the basis of physics or chemistry. And I think that was the big emotional thing when we got the DNA structure. Heredity was now explainable in terms of physics That's and right. chemistry. I was there. I was yeah. a graduate student, and I remember the scales falling off my eyes as a graduate student. Yeah, when I was at Harvard as a yeah, graduate right, student, right. Uh, listening to talk, Carter talk about how well, we're going to be hundreds of, a hundred years anyway, before we finally untangle this immensely complex code of proteins and so on, and, and we don't know where that's going to lead us and so on, and here came, bang, DNA structure. Replica. So, oh, well, let's not get into that. No, but, but, it, but the it, point just, is, uh, that, that this, this was an immense, yeah. it, uh, uh, made a huge difference in how yeah. you viewed the possible yeah. divine intervention. But uh, in my uh, childhood, my father was an unbeliever, and... Uh, you know, very early on, uh, Darwin was uh, yeah. <laughs> talked about uh, in our family. So I was raised as a Darwinian, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I've never seen the need for anything. What is uh, Darwin gets better and better now that you <laughs> you, yeah. you can read it and you can now <laughs> it does. understand it things that Darwin <laughs> really couldn't understand. Yeah, this guy could come into one of our seminars and take on uh, immediately. I think uh, a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the material. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, Taiwan really cared for people. I think there's a sort of idea we only care for ideas and we really aren't people. 